It's the calories that drive the insulin response, guys. <sighs> let's go, let's, let's see what it's about. So what happens when you eat is that insulin goes up. So yes, when you consume or when you eat food, especially carbohydrate, good to mention that, Protein also spikes uh, insulin. Its main stimulant is glucose, but still, when you spike insulin levels, okay, it tends to be when you have a high amount of glucose within your blood. And what does insulin do? It comes in and tries to lower that glucose level. So yes. And insulin basically is the hormone that tells your body to store fat. So it stops your body from burning fat. You start to store some of the sugar and store some of the fat. So yes, insulin does play a role in storage. Yes, it does play a role in driving fat into adipose tissue. Uh, it does also play a role in inhibiting uh, beta oxidation, lipolysis, okay, essentially the breaking down of triglycerides. But does this mean that you can't burn as much much fat not entirely it's really dependent on the person so yes if we spike insulin yes it will affect the rate that we oxidize fat carbohydrates get turned into glycogen which are chains of glucose in the liver basically a storage form of sugar and when you have too much of that then your liver produces lipid and it basically stores fat so when you don't eat your insulin levels fall and that's a signal to start pulling some of that energy out also good to mention glucagon in that in that uh, process there but again yes if we do decrease our insulin levels we don't eat or don't eat carbohydrate mainly carbohydrate yes insulin levels will will lower okay throughout the day so you're going to start by pulling some energy out from the glycogen and you're going to pull some energy out of the stored fat you can think of it the glycogen like a refrigerator so you can get put food in easily you can take food out easily it's just food energy. fat is more like your freezer you can store more of it but it's in your basement it's hard to get to same idea you have two storage forms of energy the refrigerator though has a limited capacity if you have too much stuff you have no choice but to put it in your freezer body doesn't have some giant vat of calorie right store sugar you can store fat there are two places in the body where you can store food calories goes in into your fridge and calories goes out ah <laughs> calories in calories out i love to see the little the little example there finally i can talk about calories in calories out so what determines that refrigerator in storing fat and what determines that fat loss process is the calories in and the calories out guys so if you are putting in more calories than what your body expends okay you will gain weight you will gain fat guys okay now let's say the opposite if you are putting in calories less than what your body expends you will lose fat fat oxidation and fat loss and the rate so the rate that you oxidize fat is not the same as fat loss so i think also important to note guys but there's a third thing that you have to consider and that is how much food goes back and forth between the freezer and the fridge of course we have to consider that okay again as mentioned if you're consuming too many calories than what your body expends you will gain weight simple and the question is what's controlling this and it turns out that the main player is insulin insulin inhibits lipolysis what that means is it stops you from getting the fat coming out so if you have a lot of insulin then you can't get the food back out this way okay so what is driving these hormonal responses what is driving insulin Okay, is insulin driving the calories? Okay, no, the calories we put in is driving the insulin response. If we eat carbohydrate, what is driving that insulin response? For example, the glucose. So what is driving that response? It's not the hormones driving the calories, okay? It's the calories that drive the insulin response, guys. All right, just something to also note. So normally if you eat a huge meal, your insulin is high, it's gonna tell the body to move all the, the storage in this way. Again, something else to kind of put on the side here. So if you are on a, an IF diet, okay, or an intermittent fasting diet, you're more likely to have a higher, okay, postprandial response, okay, if you were to consume a large meal, okay, compared to six meals throughout the day. Okay, where you may have an acute response. Is insulin bad? 
in a sense. No, having insulin, if so, if we want to argue that, yes, it will affect the rate that you oxidize fat, but you can also have low levels of insulin and still gain weight, guys, okay? You can still gain weight. You can gain weight on a high fat diet, a ketogenic style approach. Yes, you can. How can you gain weight? If you're consuming too many calories from fat, then you are going to gain weight. Too many calories. Again, remember the, the concept of the overall calorie content, okay? That is what determines weight loss or weight gain. Okay, the calories determine that. Very simple, guys. And that's the problem. So if you have a lot of insulin resistance, which keeps your insulin levels very high, it's like that freezer is kind of locked away in the basement behind the locked deal bar. You can't get at it. So insulin resistance, okay? And some studies show individuals that are more insulin resistant tend to do better or have more success on a low carb diet. However, individuals who are more insulin sensitive, they tend to do better on a low fat diet. So what does this mean? Okay, this brings me to my point that there isn't no diet that fits just the one approach. Okay, nutrition is so individualized. It's really dependent on the individual. It's really dependent on you as the individual. Is it advantageous for you? What are your goals? What are your objectives? Okay, do you want to gain as much muscle as you can? Or do you want to lose as much weight as you can? Are you more insulin resistant? Are you more insulin sensitive? Really depends on you as the individual. Okay, there's not an all one fits approach to nutrition. It's very individualized. So what happens now when you start reducing your calories? Weight loss. If you start reducing your calories in, what your body is simply gonna do is reduce the calories out. That's what it does. Yes, if you reduce your calories over time, you will see a decrease in energy expenditure. You see differences in things like uh, non x activity thermogenesis okay why is that so if you're reducing your calories yes your body will adjust to that it will adapt okay but that takes time guys it really does it won't just adapt like that straight away okay that's not how it works but again it, it doesn't come past the calories in calories out okay it always will apply guys it always will if you're not affecting the insulin you can't get at that fat you're just going to reduce your calories out Guys, look, there is a difference between, okay, and I will say this again, there is a difference between the rate that you are oxidizing fat, okay, and losing fat, okay? Just because you are oxidizing more fat, okay, does not mean that you are going to lose fat, okay? You can, all right, oxidize more fat and store more fat, Okay, this is very common on a high fat diet because you are consuming more fat. So what does that come down to? What does it come down to? It comes down to the calories, okay? The calories in, calories out. Let's not get that confused. What we tend to do is confuse, okay, fat oxidation between fat loss. They're different things, guys, okay? The rate that you are oxidizing fat, that is completely different to the rate that you are losing fat. What determines that fat loss is that calorie deficit, guys. And if you are not seeing those results, it's because you're not in that calorie deficit, guys. You're not. Calories in and calories out, okay, is so, again, that's individualized because your energy expenditure is very, it's very complex, guys. It depends on many variables. But your energy expenditure is going to be different to mine, it's going to be different to his, it's going to be different to everybody's, okay? That is why weight loss is so individualized to the individual. Look, I'm not saying that insulin it's bad or good, okay? In some cases, okay, especially with people who are more insulin resistant, controlling insulin would be a good approach for them. Okay, but also what they need to consider for the weight loss perspective, the weight loss method. Okay, how they are going to lose weight is that calorie deficit. Okay, so control insulin and control that calorie deficit. Control calories. Okay, what drives the insulin? The calories. So could they take a intermittent fasting approach? Would that be good for them? Yeah, potentially, yes. But still, it's going to come down to that calorie content when it comes to weight loss. Nutrition is individualized to you. So what I wanna do is I want to reference a systematic review, 
Okay, so a study that looked at, okay, a, a low carb diet versus a low fat diet, okay? And they found that from a calories in and calories out perspective, okay, restricting calories on a low carb diet produced greater weight loss for the full duration of the trials and at the time of the greatest weight loss compared to the low fat diet. As no effect was seen on the low carb diets and fat mass loss, these results did not support the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis of obesity. So you could also see results on a low carb and a low fat diet as long as calories are controlled. Now, an individual who may be more insulin resistant, could they still lose weight on six meals a day, okay? Consuming carbohydrate. Yes, they can, as long as they control the calories, okay? And you will also see improvements with, it, with insulin sensitivity, but could they have better success on a low carb diet? Yes potentially, but they can also have success on a low fat diet. It is dependent on the individual. Can you adhere to that diet? Because look, if you're on a weight loss plan and you can't stick to it, you can't adhere to that diet for long-term success, then you're not gonna get the results that you need. It's all about the adherence, okay? Some people will not be able to do a low carb diet because they can't adhere to it. It's dependent on the individual, okay? So to end this, insulin, does not drive if you lose weight or not. What drives you to lose weight or not is the calories, guys. It is the calories. Yeah, that's my opinion on it, guys. You can say, oh, you're wrong. You know, you don't know what you're talking about. It's all about insulin. It's not about the calories. Look, at the end of the day, you do what you want to do, mate. You, you believe, you listen to who you want to listen to. I really don't care if you want to listen to him. If you want to listen to me, then good on you, you know, you, you're on the right track, all right, you should be listening to me. I'm only going to tell you, all right, information that is not biased, that is applicable to uh, someone who is insulin resistant, okay, that you can also lose weight on another diet, that it's not an all one fit approach. I'm also going to tell you the information that is portrayed in research. And what I'm also gonna do is just tell you the facts. Yes, you can also lose weight being on an IF diet. You can also lose weight on being on a high fat diet. Yes, you can also lose weight on six meals a day. I'm telling you the facts, guys, all right? Really? Really? So guys, that is the end of this video, guys. If you like this video, remember to hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video, guys.